Welcome back, everybody. Today, I'm gonna blow your mind. Did you know that cheating may not be the best thing that you can do? That's right. Cheating on your math test, cheating on your significant other, even cheating on your diet are behaviors that may not help you get where you wanna be in life. Now, I'm not your math teacher and I'm not your psychologist, so we're not gonna discuss why you can't study well or why you have a perpetual fear of commitment, but I am a personal trainer and nutrition coach, so today we are going to dive into why cheating on your diet may not be the best thing for you on a fat loss phase. Unfortunately, cheat meals seem to have become part of the fitness and diet lexicon. The Rock, major fitness influencers will post their massive cheat meals. There'll be huge 10,000 calorie challenges on YouTube YouTube, and on the surface, they're really entertaining to watch, but they may not be the best strategy for you. It seems like a great idea, some sort of break during the week or during every two weeks to kind of reset your mental, to give you a break from the typical diet food so that then you can be re-energized as you move forward with your fat loss phase. However, there are a couple pitfalls that I think a lot of people fall into. Number one, that cheat meal turns into a massive binge session. This was my biggest problem. I would think about my cheat meal for days in advance, and by the time I got done, I would have consumed four to 5,000 calories in one sitting. I was horrible about it. If I knew a cheat meal was coming up, we were having pizza, pasta, and breadsticks, baby. It was ridiculous, and I had completely derailed all the progress that I had made earlier in the week. I think the other main problem that I see with a cheat meal with a lot of my clients is a cheat meal turns into a cheat day and then a cheat weekend. So let's say Friday night is gonna be your cheat meal, and you you indulge, but you do it safely, right? You don't go too overboard. You haven't ruined your progress just yet. You haven't overdone your calorie budget just yet. Saturday morning rolls around, however, and it's like, well, you know, brunch sounds pretty good, dude. And then next thing you know, the rest of Saturday and all of Sunday, you're consuming food like it's the last thing you're gonna do on this earth. And then only on Monday, when the work week starts up, do you get back to your fat loss phase. If you look at your calories, you've overdone it so much on the weekend that you are no longer in a calorie deficit. You have derailed all the progress that you've already made. I can already hear you in the comments. Jonah, if all I do is stick to my diet, I'm gonna go absolutely bonkers. I can't eat the same diet foods over and over and over again. I get you. I have been in your place. I have felt those same feelings. I have a couple strategies that I'm gonna go over with you today that can help you kind of take the cheat meal concept and make it a little bit more sustainable so that you can continue long-term success. First things first, we have to understand that a fat loss phase is just that, a phase. It is not a long-term, drawn out, this is how your life will be for the rest of your life process. Let's take two examples. You are a relatively healthy human being and you wanna be fit and lean for your beach trip in July. Maybe an eight week shred to lose five to 10 pounds is gonna be all you need. So you've put a time limit on it. And during those eight weeks, it becomes very easy to say, you know what? The end is in sight. I don't really need a cheat meal. I'm making such great progress that I don't have to take a cheat meal. I can just keep my head down, finish the fat loss phase, and then move up to maintenance when I'm on my vacation. No harm, no foul. Now, if you're like me and you're starting with a lot more weight to lose, then eight weeks is not gonna cut it. However, it doesn't mean that you have to do a year long fat loss phase because at some point you will run out of mental energy. You will hit a wall and you will break down. I'm speaking from experience. The pizza place is right around the corner and after 12 weeks of diet food, diet food, diet food, the phone is going up to your ear and you're ordering the extra large. We still need to put time limits on our fat loss phases, even if we have a massive amount of weight to lose. So maybe we start with an eight to 12 week fat loss phase followed by a four to six week maintenance phase, and then we repeat the cycle until we have reached our goal weight. It does stretch things out a little bit, but during those maintenance phases, your body can readjust to your new calorie level. You've lost some weight, so your energy expenditure is not gonna be as high. You start to understand where maintenance is going to be. You will realize that there's freedom in understanding what your maintenance calories are after you're done with the diet. You understand that life doesn't have to be a perpetual diet. It can be a diet phase followed by a maintenance phase. Another fantastic strategy to combat diet fatigue is the strategic refeed. Now, a refeed on its surface may just seem like a cheat meal, but instead we are going to take a more objective approach and understand our macro and calorie count and move our numbers around so that we can be better informed rather than just saying, I'm cheating today, let's throw the plan out the window and 
and go buck wild. Refeeds are traditionally used in bodybuilding and strength sports as a way to kind of recarb the body to give you more energy for your sessions during the gym. Personally, I used a refeed on my last diet break because I was finding that my squat sessions were horrible. I was getting destroyed by weight that I should be moving pretty well. And so I manipulated some of my variables. Normally I was eating 2000 calories at about 150 grams of carbs a day. But I realized that on days before I squatted, I would have a strategic refeed day where I would increase my calories to around 2,500, all in carbohydrates, so that I was able to reinvigorate my muscles with glycogen and have a better squat session. My food choice didn't change. I would just increase my normal food that I was eating on a diet. Thank God I'm a big fan of chicken and rice bowls because what I would do is just increase my rice content on the refeed day and not have to worry about anything else. You have to get strategic with it. Understand that the food that you're going to eat needs to stay relatively similar on a refeed day. Just the quantity comes up hopefully in carbohydrates and proteins and not really leaning on high saturated fats because that may cause you to bloat and then next thing you know, you're in your head about all the weight you've gained and you've derailed your progress. My third and final tip for this video is more of a mindset tip and that is to understand that during a fat loss phase, you do not need to be overly restrictive. I am a huge believer in calories in, calories out. Obviously hormone and lifestyle factors affect weight loss, but at the end of the day, nine times out of 10, if you are in a calorie deficit, you are going to lose weight. Leverage the science to your advantage. If you love ice cream, find a way to fit ice cream into your calorie budget for the day. Instead of saying, I'm not gonna have ice cream, and then six weeks in, as you're shaking from withdrawals and reaching for the pint of dolce de leche, you will have realized that maybe if you had given yourself a little taste of that ice cream and not been incredibly restrictive, you wouldn't have run into the willpower issue of breaking down and reaching for a huge pint of the ice cream. Let's be realistic for a second. If your goal is to battle your own willpower, power when you're underfed, maybe even underslept and overstressed because you're in a fat loss phase, you are going to lose 100% of the time. Willpower does not exist in those scenarios. And so if the ice cream is available, which it is because we've got DoorDash in our pocket, you're going to break down and nine times out of 10, you are going to reach for more ice cream than you would have if you had just allowed yourself a little bit of ice cream, maybe two or three times throughout the week, fitting into your calorie budget. Thanks for tuning in for another video, folks. That's all I have. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe, share these videos around so we can reach as many people as possible. I really do appreciate the continued support on this channel. Now that we've figured out how to take a diet break or a refeed, if you need help choosing an app to help you track all of your macros and calories, you gotta click this video right here where I discuss Macro Factor, which is my favorite macro tracking app on the market. Get strong and stay strong, folks. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.